Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Wednesday, March 14th, 2012. I am David Domzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Before I introduce you to our guest today, let me share some quick notes with you. First off, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention. You can do so for just 99 cents on Apple's iBookstore, Kindle, Nook, and Sony Reader. And for paperback, just under 10 bucks, head over to Amazon and create space. All you got to do, go to financialbin.com, click on the book section at the very top, next to the login button for more information. Now, secondly, we're in the process of editing and formatting for our next book, Landlord Intervention. This is a book by a gentleman who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years. He gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. We plan to release this book in May 2012. And finally, we're also working on and collecting submissions for wealth intervention. We plan to release this book in the this next book in the intervention series later this year. Now let me introduce you to today's guest. His name is Barry Moltz. Barry is a consultant, author, and speaker who provides help for small businesses and allows them to get unstuck, quote-unquote. His next book, Small Town Rules, How to Big, How Big Brands and Small Businesses Can Prosper in a Connected Economy, with co-author Becky McRae, is due out in April 2012. Now, Barry, I want to welcome you to Financial Bin Radio. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Not a problem at all. Let, let's get right to it, Barry. The, the first question I have for you is, can you give the listeners you know, a brief description of what you did prior to your current career? Well, you know, I'm a recovering entrepreneurholic. Um, <laughs> I've had three businesses over the last 20 years. The first business, I went into business. The second business, I was kicked out by partners. And the third <laughs> business, I luckily sold during the last internet bubble, paid back the bank the $1.3 million I owed them. And fortunately, I got my wife back at the same time. <laughs> Well, that's actually a great lead into my next question then. So what led you to becoming that entrepreneur and speaker and author? Well, you know, I worked at IBM for the first nine years of my career. And then my last manager, my last sales manager, he used to have contests where first prize was lunch with him. And I'm always like, okay, what second prize? Two lunches with you? At that point, I realized I didn't really want to work for someone else. So I figured I'd go out and work for myself. Now, what, what is it about working for yourself, Barry? What, what, is, what is the draw for that? Well, I think that uh, people really start to work for themselves because they have a certain passion. You know, they want to see, you know, David, their ideas succeed or fail, and that's really the reward. You know, can someone really pay you for an idea you have executed properly? Now, now, now Barry, one of your, your one of your taglines is, you know, you help get businesses unstuck. How do, how do right. you do that? Well, you know, a lot of businesses get stuck because they either lose the passion, they don't have the cash flow, the, 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 the customers have changed somewhere along the line. So the first thing you have to realize is that you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. You know, I love that uh, Albert Einstein quote that says, the definition of insanity is keeping doing the same thing over and over again and expect to get different results. That's the Absolutely. place you really start is doing something different. Well, I, I imagine that quote's probably on a T-shirt somewhere out there, right? <laughs> somewhere with that, with his, with his picture of his tongue hanging out, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, now, Barry, uh, you know the reason I really wanted to have you on here is because I want to hear about this new book. So, tell us about Small Town Rules. You know, what is it about, and you know, what's your goal for it, and and uh, and, 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 your, and your co-authors go for it as well. Well, you know, Becky and I, McCray and I got together probably about three years ago. We met at SobCon, and, of course, she, they call her the Seth Godin of small-town business. And we have this idea that really business intrinsically has changed now. With the Internet, every customer can talk to every other customer. So it's kind of like living in a small town. And so we said, well, what can big brands and other urban entrepreneurs really learn from the success that small town and rural entrepreneurs have had for hundreds of years. So, of course, we list, we list the seven rules that uh, they have played by for two centuries. Well, you know, I guess probably as you were, you know, wrapping up the book, you, you, and, uh, you and Becky, you know, Pinterest kind of took off. So, I mean, I guess in terms of a small town sense, how have you seen maybe small businesses kind of use Pinterest? And, and, and is it something that you, you've used and you're familiar with? You know, I'm not that familiar with Pinterest because I heard it's just for girls. 
and I haven't used the uh, the male version of it. But, but listen, people want to now appear small. You know, you remember 10 or 20 years ago when you first started business, you wanted to appear big, right? Your envelopes right, right. had to be typed out, everything had to typed out. Now everything's got to appear like it's really small. Things want to be handwritten. I mean, even large corporations now want to show that real personal and small touch. So that's the way things have changed. Again, it's like being in a small town. Everybody knows everybody else. Barry, what is the biggest mistake you find startup entrepreneurs make, and, and, and what can they do to resolve it or even prevent it from happening in the first place? Well, the biggest mistake that they make is that they – don't get out of their chair, they don't get out of their office and stop writing the business plan and go talk to customers, right? People right. think if you build it, they will come. And guess what? People just don't. As soon as possible, and that's really why I like, I love, you know, Eric Reese, who I was on MSNBC with, I love the whole lean startup concept because, right. as he says, is as soon as you can, create the smallest type of uh, complete product or service you can and go out and let's see if someone, besides someone you're related to, David, will pay for it. You know, you know, Barry. When we first started, you, you mentioned that uh, you know you, you you had a business that failed or a business that you that you were kicked yeah. out of. What what was uh, maybe maybe it's the mistake surrounding that business? But what what is your biggest mistake that you made in your business, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, I think there are really two mistakes. One is that businesses are inherently just about people. You know, the idea doesn't matter at all. It's really about the execution of the idea. So what's important is not the business you're going into, but who you're doing the business with. And that's just not a partner, but that's a, uh, a customer, that's a vendor, that's employees. You see, when I got kicked out of a business, I found those partners in the classified section of my local newspaper. Uh, now, that may be a good place to find a car or a boat or an apartment, but certainly not partners. That's the first mistake. The second mistake is we have to realize that business really isn't about profits or revenue. It's about cash flow. And if you don't understand the financial statements in your business, it's a problem. Now, you're looking at a guy who has an MBA from Northwest University. In the late 90s, I lost a million dollars in the sale of my business because wow. I didn't understand every number in the financial statement. So I really got burned there. Is that is that a problem you see a lot of maybe I don't know maybe maybe seasoned entrepreneurs as well as startup entrepreneurs make, making I mean do they not have a grasp of uh, maybe starting off as their personal finances that maybe uh, leading into is, their business is, finances I I don't because I don't really think they teach this they don't even at least years ago they didn't teach that business school you know I go around the country helping small business owners unstuck and I will tell you fifty percent of small business owners that I meet can't correctly identify what's on a profit and loss statement. 75% can't identify correctly what's on a balance sheet, and guess what? Only 5% can identify correctly what's on a cash flow statement. It is amazing and wow. appalling. Now, now, is that one of the biggest things that you find people are stuck on? Absolutely. What they have done is they either have outsourced the numbers to a local accountant or bookkeeper, or they don't use financial statements at all. And I keep telling them, if you don't want to know where you've been, how do you know where you're going? We have to raise the financial literacy of small business owners in this country. I think it's really critical. I, I couldn't agree more, and it's really one of the things that going forward, the, the financial bin, that's what, what our focus is, to kind of make them aware, because you know, I'm, I'm an accountant by trade, and I, and I do, uh, I do auditing as uh, my full-time job, so I, I, I know the importance of it, because I'm, in, I'm doing it every day. So we just got to make sure that we get it into colleges and, and, and things like that. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it's better now. I mean, I think in the entrepreneurship programs where yeah. people are looking at financial statements and they're running case studies and things like that, I think it's a little bit better. Um, you know, I realized when my son went away to college, I never really taught him to balance his checkbook. And so when he came home for his first uh, semester, we sat down for an hour or two and I showed him how to balance a checkbook. I think that's where it starts. Oh, you're, you're a good father, and I, I would agree. Uh, yeah, it does, definitely starts at home with your parents just sitting down, taking even 10 to 15 minutes and just going through it and showing, showing them how the grown-ups do it, you know? Right, but, 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 but I've given up on my wife, so I don't show her how to balance her checkbook. After 21 years, David, I don't touch that. Well, it's your job, right? It's the husband. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Barry, uh, switching gears here a little bit, and you know, what have you done or what do you do to distinguish the Barry Moltz brand? 
Well, I think what I do is I, I call it edutainment, right? I like to educate people at the same time, entertain them. You know, there's a lot of experts and consultants out there who talk about how to help small business owners. But you see, I've actually been there. I've actually done it. I've had businesses where I've gone into business, kicked out of business, and sold my business. So wherever you're at, I've already been there so we can learn from my experience. I think that's fantastic. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, I guess at the time it probably wasn't for you, but now you have this wealth of knowledge because you've you've been at every stage. You've been where you know you've had your wins and you've had some terrible losses, and it's just, right. I mean, you know, so when when you speak, I imagine people really want to know what what you have to say. Yeah, yeah, I think that, again, I try to use edutainment, you know, I'm basically here because when I sold my last business, my wife wouldn't let me start another one, so, you know, that's necessarily sometimes the way it goes, so you got to morph yourself. Absolutely, no, no, you, you, you definitely hit the nail on the head right there. And yeah. now, now, Barry, now, who has mentored you, I mean, maybe when you first started, and, and maybe who do you consult today? Yeah, the folks that I really consult today is, one of them is a gentleman in uh, Chicago named Rick Mazursky. He's a old-time retail small business guy. And, and what I really learned from, from Rick, there's a great story in my first book that says when he went through basic training, uh, bayonet training, in fact, he said he learned on that day there's only two types of people, the quick and the dead. And I think that as small business owners, we really have to be we have to be quick. We have to really take action. That's sure. really one of the advantages that we have over some of these bigger guys. So that's definitely one of my mentors. And the other mentor is Reba Lasansky. You know, she used to be the editor over Entrepreneur Magazine. She's just seen so many business, and she's really got a great compass on what to do in small business. Barry, of all of all the the books you've written and the talks you've given. What is one piece of advice that you would want any, entre any Gen Y entrepreneur listening to this to take away? Um, I really think the most important thing is that you really have to take action. You constantly have to realize that, that there's success in whatever you're going to do. There's going to be failure. There really isn't always something you can learn from failure. Sometimes it just sucks, right? Sure, but sure. there's going to be a cycle of success and failure. The most important thing you can do is Learn whatever you can, have a pity party, cheer the darkness, but eventually you have to let go. As I say, you have to bounce so you give yourself another chance of success. Success in business is about small, patient, iterative steps. That's really what the key is. Barry, I really want to thank you for your time tonight. This has been some great advice, and I, I know I've learned something, and I will take away something from this. Where can, everyone, where can people contact you, get in touch with you, and where can they pick up the book? You can go to my website, which is www.barrymoltz.com, B-A-R-R-Y-M-O-L-T-Z.com, uh, and they can pick up books wherever books are sold, <laughs> starting, I believe, uh, April the 4th. Excellent. Well, I, I really appreciate it, Barry. I, I really want to thank you for your time, and it's been a pleasure. Thanks, David. Have a good day. You too. Take care. All right, everybody, that was Barry Maltz, the guy who gets businesses unstuck. Now, make sure to pick up Barry's next book. It's Small Town Rules, How, to big, how big Brands and Small Businesses Can Prosper in a Connected Economy, with co-author Becky McRae, and as you said, it's due out in April 2012. I want to thank you for joining us. Now, make sure to check out financialbid.com for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice for Generation Y, and get your copy of Entrepreneur Invention, please, 99 cents. Various ebooks and paperback for Amazon. Till next time, I am David Mzowski signing off. Thank you for joining us.